This is the route that the Interstate 5 travels through Seattle. The stretch of freeway running through downtown travels through this massive freeway trench. Just take a moment to listen to what it sounds like to be here. This is the sound of the 288,000 vehicles that are carried along this corridor every day. Remember, cities aren't loud, cars are loud. For a quick history lesson, the I-5 was constructed in the 1960s as a part of the interstate highway system. Around 4,500 homes were demolished to make room for this corridor. So rather than being productive city blocks with homes, businesses, parks, or communal spaces, it is an expensive car sewer designed to flush suburbanites in and out of the city. And the result is a Seattle that is split east and west along the I-5. Extending beyond bad land use and making walking trips less convenient, these urban freeways are also a hot spot for pollution. People living near freeways are exposed to toxic exhaust fumes and are inhaling ultra-fine particles such as soot, brake pad wear, and tire dust. These particles can enter lungs and bloodstreams, leading to a wide range of adverse health outcomes such as asthma, respiratory diseases, and cardiovascular disease. The noise pollution produced by all these vehicles is also more than an inconvenience. Exposure to loud, constant noises is linked to hearing loss, higher stress levels, hypertension, and cognitive decline. Since dense housing and apartments are typically crammed next to highways and busy arterials, people who cannot afford to live away from the freeway are exposed to higher concentrations of pollution, leading to worsened quality of life. All of this just to move one person per car from one end of town to the other. The sad thing is, these drivers aren't getting anywhere fast. Local trips through the city are constantly competing with interstate journeys, which frequently congest the corridor, especially during rush hour when these trips slow down to a crawl. According to the Seattle Times, traffic is congested more than 8 hours per day between Federal Way and Seattle, and 7 hours per day between Seattle and Everett. The Interstate 5 was constructed under the hopes that it would relieve congestion, but it has actually gotten worse as Seattle has continued to grow. As Leonard Garfield, the director of Seattle's Museum of History and Industry puts it, it did its job of making Seattle a city that was easy to get through. It linked us to the rest of the nation in a very compelling way. It solved one problem and created others that we continue to grapple with in its wake. No road is ever big enough to accommodate the number of people who eventually want to use it. The interstate highway system is generally a good thing, but it was a tremendous mistake to plow them through the urban city centers. Ideally, it would be best not to have freeways running through the city center at all, so interstate journeys do not have to compete with trips that are traveling within the city. However, if a freeway removal is not politically feasible, a lid may be the next best option. This involves creating a structure over the trench, so the newly created space above the freeway could be used for a park, public facilities, buildings, or other amenities. This has partly been accomplished in 1976. Freeway Park helped reconnect the First Hill and downtown neighborhoods by adding five acres of walkways, landscaping, and water features. Similarly, the Seattle Convention Center also sits on top of the freeway which demonstrates that you can build a freeway lid that is capable of supporting other buildings. There has been a push from local advocacy groups to further expand Freeway Park to lid even more parts of this freeway trench. A feasibility study for an I-5 lid was released in late 2020. The study spanned the area from Madison Street to Denny Way. Since the city's street grid is at a higher elevation than the actual freeway, it was determined that a freeway lid would be technically feasible. The best kind of feasible. The study looked at a range of feasibility based on three different test cases. A public park on the easy sites, mid-rises and high-rises with a mix of commercial and residential uses, and a balance between both civic and private uses. Between 2.5 and 10 acres could be converted into new park space, which would make it one of the largest parks in downtown Seattle. A freeway lid would also help reconnect the street grid. As of right now, there are some missing links, as shown by the dashed lines on this map. 
Filling in this part of the street grid would help shorten walking distances when traversing through each of these neighborhoods. The reclaimed space could also be used to construct new market rate housing units, new affordable housing, new civic spaces such as schools or communal facilities, and between 2 and 5 million square feet of commercial and office space. According to the U.S. Census, Seattle's population has increased by 21% from 2010 to a total of 737,000 people. The First Hill, Capitol Hill, and downtown neighborhoods absorb roughly 30% of Seattle's population growth. As Seattle continues to grow, there is going to be even more demand for housing. So a freeway lid would help free enough space to construct more homes to accommodate the city's growing population. Finally, a freeway lid would help dampen the noise, providing respite from the constant sound. This would help make it more comfortable to spend time in the area. One of the challenges to constructing a freeway lid, other than cost, are the on and off ramps in the area, but it may be worth getting rid of the ones that are within the extents of the freeway park. For example, some people may have seen this viral video of crazy crashes as drivers eject themselves from the Union Street off-ramp. This off-ramp is poorly designed. It abruptly goes from being an off-ramp to a stoplight, and there is no visibility when coming around the turn, so there isn't a whole lot of time to actually react and slow down. It's simply not worth keeping an off-ramp like this one, so when the downtown freeway trench gets its makeover, it is preferable that these problematic ramps are removed. Furthermore, the study details that removing the Olive Way on-ramp could create even more space for additional high-rises. In fact, getting rid of some of these on and off ramps may improve traffic flow by getting rid of the pinch points and better distributing the cars along the street grid. Between less noise, more communal space, and more places to live, litting the I-5 would be a major improvement for the city. It would also help add some much-needed green space within a short walk of the downtown, First Hill, and Capitol Hill neighborhoods. Various renderings show what the freeway trench could end up looking like if a freeway lid is pursued, but it can be difficult to tell how much of a difference it makes by going off the renderings alone. To get a better idea of what a freeway lid may look like, we can take a quick trip to Sam Smith Park. Interstate 90 travels eastbound from Seattle to Mercer Island and Bellevue, and this entire park sits on top of a freeway lid for the I-90. Originally, the Mount Baker Tunnel started here and spat out cars on the other side. Today, everything leading up to the original tunnel site is a 10.3-acre park with bike paths, a playground, tennis courts, and it is also adjacent to an elementary school. Once the Link Light Rail 2 line opens, it will also be home to the Judkins Park Station. Unfortunately, it is a freeway median station, but I will talk about what's wrong with that in a future video. The land use here is a lot more meaningful than a freeway that tore apart two neighborhoods from the north and the south side. Overall, these freeway lids are an adequate way of stitching together communities that were severed by highway construction projects from over half a century ago. And it does seem as though this downtown freeway trench may be lidded within the foreseeable future. On Tuesday, September 5th, the Seattle City Council passed a resolution supporting the development of freeway lids within the city. This has rippling impacts across our city, reconnecting neighborhoods, creating new park space, and creating new, uh, potentially new buildings. This is largely a symbolic victory. It doesn't actually mean much yet. It just shows that the City Council is willing to work with Washington State Department of Transportation on a future lid. Hopefully it does amount to something, so we can have more public spaces and fewer freeway trenches.